The last prophet in the world, last prophet in the world, last prophet in the world to show how to be closer to Allah. He is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Family background. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's family tree started from Prophet Ibrahim through Ismail peace be upon them. The Prophet was born in the most respected tribe in Arabia, the Quraysh. His family name was Hashim after his great grandfather. Hashim was very respected and generous. He used to take care of the people that came to Mecca for Hajj and distribute food to them. He was a businessman. For his business, during the winter, he used to travel to Yemen, and during the summer, he used to go to Syria. He had a very good connection with these two countries. One summer at Medina, he married Selma in his business trip, and Selma got pregnant. But after a few days, Hashim died in Gaza, Palestine. Selma's baby boy was Shaiba. Hashim's family did not know about Selma. After eight years, Hashim's younger brother, Muttalib, knew about his brother's wife and son. So Muttalib brought them to Mecca. People called Shaiba Muttalib slave, or known as Abdul Muttalib. He was very smart, handsome, and generous, just like his father, Hashim. Later, Abdul Muttalib, or Shaiba, became the leader of Quraysh. Do you remember the miracle water of the Zamzam well, which was discovered during the time of baby Ismail and his mother Hajar, peace be upon them? Yes! The people of the Zurham tribe started to live in that area. After many, many years, the people started to worship idols as their gods. So, as a punishment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to dry the miracle water of the Zamzam well. Day by day, it was covered with stone and sand. After some time, everyone forgot about the Zamzam well. It was lost for many years. One day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed the location of the Zamzam well to Abdul Muttalib in his dream. He started to dig that place with one of his sons. The miracle water of the Zamzam well was found. At that time, Abdul Muttalib promised to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if he had ten sons, he would sacrifice one of his sons to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him ten sons. One day, Abdul Muttalib remembered his promise to sacrifice one of his sons. But he did not know which son he would choose. So he drew a lottery. His youngest son, Abdullah, the prophet's father, was selected. Everyone loved Abdullah very much. So they offered 100 camels to be sacrificed instead of Abdullah. Then Abdul Muttalib drew the lottery three times between Abdullah and the 100 camels. Every time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected the 100 camels and saved our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's father, Abdullah. Later on, Abdullah got married to Amina, one of the most honorable women in Quraysh. Her father's name was Wahab. Amina became pregnant after a few days. During that time, Abdullah went to Syria for a business.
this trip. However, about two months before Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam would be born, his father Abdullah died in Medina on his return journey. At that time, he was only 25 years old. So, did Abdullah see his son Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam at all? No, Abdullah could not see his son Muhammad peace be upon him. But he knew his wife was pregnant. During that time, Mecca was very famous for the house of God, and it became a very big business center. The governor of Yemen, Abraha, became very greedy to take control of Mecca. At one point, he was ready to attack Mecca with a very big army. With him. He had 60,000 soldiers and around 13 big elephants. Abraha used the biggest elephant for himself. The people of Mecca became scared. Abdul Muttalib had a very strong sense of faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knew the house of Allah would be saved in a miracle way because they did not have enough strength to fight Abraham's army. He told everyone to take all of their family members and hide in the mountaintops. At that time, the prophet's mother, Amina, was eight months pregnant. Then, the miracle started to happen. When Abraham's army was close to Mecca, all of the elephants just sat there. Nothing could stop them. Suddenly, all of the elephants started to run in the other direction. Meanwhile, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent lots of small birds with three stones. One was in their beak and the other two were in their claws. The birds dropped their stones on Abraham's leg. The stones cut their body parts right away and killed them instantly. Their body became like smashed corn. It was a horrible moment for Abraham's army. And every one of them died by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save the Kaaba with that big miracle? At that time, Rome and Persian empires were very powerful. That miracle was a big alarm to the whole world to warn them not to attack Makkah. It was a very big welcome sign for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam coming to protect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's house and law. Around 50 days later, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born on the 20th or 22nd of April in the year of 571. It was Monday morning and the Arabic date was 9th Rabi'ul Awal. But I thought our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was born at the 12th Rabi'ul Awal. Yes, some scholars also think it was 12th Rabi'ul Awal in the year of 570. But most researchers consider 9th Rabi'ul Awal and the year 571 to be the most accurate. But let me clear up one thing. There are two different information here. Rabi'ul Awal is the Arabic month from the Arabic calendar and year 571 is from the Christian calendar. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best about the correct birth date of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Well, that's all for today. Inshallah, we'll see you next time. The Prophet's 